Each Wambugu apple seedling costs about 1,000 Kenyan shillings. That's nearly $10 per plant. So depending on your exchange rate, you get to understand what that will cost you in your country. And if you're planting dozens, it definitely becomes a small fortune. And this is one of the most prohibitive costs in apple farming, coming only second to the cost of acquiring the land if it's not like your ancestral land. Because this is a long-term thing, so you need a, like a permanent piece of land for you to do this kind of uh, fruit farming. But the cost of seedlings, it's definitely very high. So I decided no more buying. <laughs> I'll grow my own. And the secret, it's all in this forgotten part of the tree, the rootstock. Now you all know that the common advice is that anything that grows below the grafted area, you get rid of it, immediately you see it. So that accounts for the main scouting exercises that we do in our farms so that whatever is below the grafting area we get rid of it which is also good because it's true this part is going to grow faster because it's the the rootstock and it might overpower the the scion which is the part we are interested in the variety that's going to give us fruits now in the previous two videos i've been pouring out my heart to you my audience regarding my frustrations and challenges in this journey of Fambugu apple farming and i've realized that we have a lot in common with most people that came out to comment and share some of their frustrations and one of the obvious solution is we are going back into the market to buy more seedlings. In this case, you might have bought a few Wambugu apples and we've established that it's not entirely a hype. So if you already have those seedlings growing in your garden, then it's not like we're going to uproot them. We're just looking for a solution. And then we have also established that we need pollinators, other varieties that are going to give us a higher percentage of pollination in our gardens. And that will mean going out for those varieties. Now you don't have to buy a lot because this could range anywhere between 500 and 1000. So what I'm doing in my garden, I already bought five golden dosage. I already have like 10 other variety apples and there's a hot debate on whether the Anna variety and the Wambugu apple variety are the same. So I don't know whether to count on the other varieties which are yet to flower or not, but I have the golden dosage growing. I have five stems. And my idea is I want to propagate more rootstock so that when my, my golden dosage is of age when i have strong branches i'm going to now graft them onto this m9 rootstock now the idea about graft uh, the idea about these apples apple growing in the tropics is we need a rootstock a reliable rootstock that's going to resist diseases that's going to adapt well to different climatic conditions and that rootstock is more often than not the m9 rootstock and because i acquired my variety from wambugu apples the the empire i'm kind of assured that i actually have the right rootstock which is the m9 rootstock now an accident happened when i started out and i had like uh, two of my apples breaking at the, the the grafting area but i let the the other variety grow at first in my naivety i didn't know that this variety will never fruit it will grow and grow and grow and never fruit so when i came to realize that i had the option of cutting it down but then again i realized this is a gold mine because i'm going to have my own m9 rootstock now you understand that most people do not sell the m9 rootstock separately but this is what you need before you can now graft your scion onto so you need two varieties the rootstock 
and the scion. The scion is going to be any variety of your choice. In this case, I want to propagate as many varieties as possible in this small space because I've realized the more the varieties you have, the higher your chances of pollination and also the higher your chances of having fruit for a longer period of time because if you have like I'm thinking of getting Bryban variety as well and I'm going to graft them onto these rootstocks and then have a wider variety of apples in my farm. So the idea is I need to propagate these rootstocks first and so I came to understand that these offshoots, the ones that are coming from the roots, already have roots on them. On them. So I've been clearing anything below the grafting area that's coming off the stem. But of late, I decided to let a few of the... Because now my apples are quite grown. So the competition for food and nutrients between the rootstock that's growing on the side and the plant is quite low. So I left a few. And this is an experiment for me because, of course, I'm doing this for the first time. I'm no expert. I'm just walking my journey and I hope you get to learn from me. So I, bought, I, I left this to grow. And because it's the rainy season right now, I want to just go and try. Now, the, there are several options, but I want to plant them in the ground as it is. Now, I realize that I have a gold mine because if I have the M9 variety right here in my garden and if you already have any number of fruits, fruit plants in your, your garden, you already have the rootstock. I hope you bought from legit sources so that you don't find yourself multiplying a very unreliable rootstock. So for your own sake, I would recommend that you go for legit and well-hardened seedlings to begin with so that you actually have a variety that's going to give you healthy plants if you decide to propagate. So I have my M9 rootstock and I want to plant it into the ground. This is now a series of experiments I'm willing to take. <laughs> Because honestly, there are times I've bought seedlings from whichever fruit. I have a lot of fruit trees in my garden. There are times I've bought seedlings and they're very disappointing. So the good thing with doing your own nursery is you get to decide how long the grafting area is, how, how the length between your root and the grafting area. Because the idea is we shouldn't let the grafted area go below beneath the soil but sometimes you get stems that are quite uh, short and you have limited space and it doesn't quite add up that you're not going to the soil is not going to get onto the scion and that happens sometimes so with uh with this kind of experiments i hope that i'm going to regulate that length i saw the Dr. Ngetich seedlings are really tall, like the rootstock is really tall. So there's actually no way that you're going to have the grafting area beneath the soil level because they're really long. So that's the idea. I, I'm also going to copy that and ensure that I have a really long stems before the grafting area. Not extremely, of course, but long enough to stay above the ground, even when you want to, to like uh, put more soil closer to the stem. So I know you all have been told to remove these shoots, the ones that grow from below the graft, but these are actually M9 rootstock shoots. And most people don't realize that they can form their own roots if handled right. So while everyone else was pruning them off, I decided to experiment. And with this, I hope to get my authentic and free, <laughs> in capital and underlined, rootstock, M9 rootstock for my next generation of either Wambugu apples. Now, this is going to be all up to me. The idea is I'm going to try different varieties and give it some time before I I, I like settle on the best variety to grow around here. I've heard a lot of good things about Bryban variety, which 
does not have a lot of pollination issues, but I'll still have to do it for myself and see what works best because I do have more space where I can do another generation of or another block of apple, uh, apple farming because the initial idea was apple farming. I already have my 100 apple trees and of course we are not going to give up. We are going to try and ensure that this works by doing the right thing. Most farmers don't know this but the rootstock type and height directly affect your apple's future growth. Some sellers use short rootstocks and when you plant too deep that graft gets buried. Once that happens, the tree starts growing from the scion roots, weak, shallow, and short-lived. And by propagating your own M9 rootstock, you can choose the right height. Ensure the graft sits safely above the ground and your trees live longer and fruit better. So let's make, make use of our natural shoots the rootstock shoots at the base and just let them grow a little bit longer the ones that are likely to give you roots not everything because of course you don't want to limit but you can sacrifice <laughs> now picture this if you sacrifice one one stem one seedling then you're sacrificing a thousand bob but you're eventually going to reap more from that because if the five the five seedlings have just propagated today if they all survive of course you do not expect a hundred percent survival rate and you're also new into this like me if you're going to try so of course there's room for trial and error but once you're done once you know how this is done, then you're going to save yourself thousands. You could actually grow a whole farm. Like, how many sticks do you need <laughs> to do a thousand seedlings? I don't know if I'm overthinking these things. Because I have, a, I have in my next video, I'm going to actually try create a nursery of the rootstock. Because I have this two trees that I let grow wild and the, if I cut short stems of the, 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 the tree, which is essentially the M9 variety, I can have like 50 or 100 at a go. I don't know if I'm overthinking. I don't know if I'm... This is mind-blowing. I don't know why I didn't do this from the onset. I've been having these because trees this here for three years. And if you're starting out, I'm telling you, you should pay me for this information. And start now. Now, now, now. Just do your experiment. And if it works, well and good. If it doesn't, what do you stand to lose? Kind of nothing, really. Because it's your time, of course. You'll spend time. You'll need to research. You'll need to give it your best. And if it works, you could even be selling to your neighbors at uh, a cheaper price, hopefully. Or, but if you want, you can also do the 1,000 one if you're doing it right and it works for you. So this is a potential business model. <laughs> okay, I talk too much. So we'll leave this here to grow and see you when they're pencil thick and they're well grounded and then we'll see how we're going to graft them. I actually have one that I already did some time back and it's ready and in our next, uh, our in this series of propagating the apples, I'm going to show you how I do it. I intend to propagate one of the Anna variety onto that tree and see how that happens or maybe the pink lady variety because I already have enough of the, the Wambugu apples in the same space and I just want to do more intercropping and hopefully give a better report in the next one or two years. See you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe so that you see how this is going to turn into a small apple nursery for home use and maybe in future to share to other people so that they, we can all grow together. See you in the next one. Thank you for your support. I do not take it for granted.